a document we've written called um, style, gui style Guidelines for Local Variable Type Inference. Right, so here's an example. In this for loop, the loop variable is this really complicated uh, type. Um, so it's not just string. So if you replace string with var, that doesn't, that doesn't buy you all that much. But if you look at what's going on in this, in this sample code here, there's a for loop where the loop variable has a type, which is iterator of question extends map.entry of question extends string question extends number. And so that's a mouthful. It doesn't even fit on one line. And so when you have a type like that, writing out the explicit type actually begins to get in the way. And so that's where var really provides an advantage, because if you, you can replace that entire long, verbose, generic type with just var. And if you do that in a couple places, it really cleans up the code and, and makes it more concise. But you might also say, gee, we're not writing out the explicit type anymore. Aren't we losing information there? And in a very strict sense, yes, there's less information there. But based on the context, you often don't actually need to understand the exact type of the variable in order to figure out what's going on in the code. So I would say this, this code that uses var here, we know that we're iterating, uh, iterating over a map of question extends string, question extends number, or basically a map from string to number. And we're iterating over its entries. So we get entries of string and number, and we extract them, and we just use them. And, and var gets those really verbose generic types out of the way, and so you can see what's going on in the code. So that's the it's advantage wonderful. of using var here. Cool. And so this is a full guide on, on how to do it right, right? Right. So, so, so one of the things about var is that when we introduce this feature, I think, there's some, I think this is an example of how using var can make your code better. Uh, but there's actually been a lot of controversy about this feature. Um, some people think that if you use var, it will make your code unreadable. Um, and it's probably true that you can use use or I would say misuse var in ways that make your code unreadable. But the fact is that, uh, and, oh, and so people have said Java shouldn't have var because then it enables programmers to write unreadable code. And if you think about that a little bit, that, that doesn't actually make any sense because if you have programmers who are writing unreadable code, it, it doesn't matter whether Java has var or not. Oh, right. But with when w now that Java does have var, if you use it in the right way, like the example I just showed, then it can really improve the code. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the style guide is about. Say, use var in these circumstances when it really improves the code. And over here, maybe it's not such a good idea. But that's OK. It's completely optional to whether as to whether you use var. So you can still um, use the old way, I would say. Right. The explicit way to yeah you can you can you know so so if you upgrade to Java 10 or 11 you can I mean you can take the old code and compile it and it'll just work and mm -hmm. of course all old Java code or all existing Java code uses explicit type declarations mm -hmm. and so the question is do you want to go back and change some of that old code to use var or when you're writing new code should you use var and I think it's a little bit subjective but if you, if you have code that has really long, verbose type names, then there's some cases where starting to use var makes a lot of sense. And um, it's not necessarily worth it to go back and, retro go back and retrofit old code. Uh, there's always a question of, of how much investment you want to do in refactoring old code. Uh, but sometimes, again, like the example I just showed, you might have some old code that's really messy because you had to write out all those explicit types. And so it's much nicer that if, um, much nicer if you can replace those with var. Cool. Tell us a little bit about the, about the the structure of this of this guide and how to use it. So this so this the style guide document is um, it's on the OpenJDK website, uh, and so Project Amber is the OpenJDK project that is concerned with with adding small language features. Um, I, I I wouldn't necessarily sorry not small language features but language features that improve developer productivity, and mm -hmm. this, is, this is one of them. 
And so if you go to the Project Amber webpage on the OpenJDK website, there are links to a couple documents, including this one, which is the style guideline. And so if you uh, want to look through this document there, basically it's organized into four principles which, uh, from which the guidelines are derived. And then after the four principles, there are seven guidelines. And so there's, there's a lot of detail here. Uh, I think this is something that I recommend that, that people sit down and read and, and, and try out on their code. Um, but okay. um, I just wanted to hit, hit one of the principles here, which is reading code Reading code is more important than writing code. Mm -hmm. And, and um, and, and also this is related to um, uh, the idea of code readability not depending on IDEs. One of the things that, that people will, will jump to a conclusion about when they see var is they say, oh great, when I'm, when I'm typing my program, if I have a big long type name or generic type or something that I need to write in my program, I don't have to do that anymore. I, all I have to do is type var, which is very short. And, and that, that's sort of true. And then the counterpoint to that is, well, the IDE should be able to complete that for you and so forth, right? I and that's, it's, it's not a very interesting discussion. It's kind of leading in the wrong direction because it's all about when I'm in the act of writing the program, how many keystrokes do I have to do? Mm -hmm. And fundamentally, that's not what this is about. What it is about is is reading the code. And so if you, s you know, I, I keep going back to this, this uh, example I have all the way at the bottom, uh, which is if you, if, if you wrote this code six months ago or so if somebody else wrote this code and you came back to it and you had to figure out what it did, the first thing that would hit you is oh, look at all those question marks and angle brackets. I have to figure out what all these generic types mean. Right? And, and that right there is a difficulty in readability, difficulty in understanding. You have to absorb what's going on. It's like, and then, it, then after a while you might sink in, oh, that's right, okay, so it's just a map, and I'm iterating over the entries of the map, and then I have an iterator of those map entries. Okay, I have, you know, all right. So, so it might take you a little while to get over that hump. But if you have var, then all those types get out of the way, and you can say, oh, I'm iterating over the map entries. I know exactly what's going on here, right? So that's what we mean about readability, and just lessening the, 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 the amount of, of, of you know, the, the, the burden of thinking and parsing through these complicated types is what's relieved by having var used in the right places. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you did also, you wrote an FAQ also to help with, uh, so can that's we move to that? And that's, that's right, yeah. So so in the same place, in the same site. Uh, uh, hold on. Oh, I'll okay. Uh, oh, tick very tick good. Tick. Uh, yeah. On the Project Amber webpage on the OpenGDK website, um, just a week or two ago, we posted a list of frequently asked questions. Um, so that's kind of a companion to the style guide. So the style guide is prescriptive. It's like, here's how we believe programs ought to be evaluated, so these are the principles, and then here's some guidelines. If you're using var, use it here, use it here, right? So, so it's a prescriptive document. It tells you how to, how to write code and how to, uh, how, to, how to write code using var, um, you know, such that, we, you know, the, the, that the code you write will be better than it was without var. Um, but along the way, there are lots of questions that people have about var, such as, why have this in the first place? Or right. um, why, did, why didn't you do it this other way, and so so this this there's there's a fair amount of uh, language, uh, programming language design rationale here that it goes into, um, but um, so that's on the the FAQ uh, on the Project Amber webpage, and uh, there are a bunch of bunch of questions here, and if more questions come in, um, you know we can certainly add to this. Um, but so it's, know, it's kind of the, the background and a little bit like comparison because like people like to do like comparison with other languages and so why you added var and yeah, and what people can expect uh, how different yeah, it is. Yeah, from so so why does yeah. var why does var work this way in Java? In some other right. programming language, you can you can do this other thing. Why didn't Java do that? Mm -hmm. There's some design rationale. It's actually a little bit subtle, but we thought through a whole bunch of issues and. Um, the questions are obvious, the answers are not, and so that's why we decided to take some time to, to, you know, to you know, write a document that explains it. Because it's, it's kind of hard to answer this stuff on Twitter. It'd be, right. you know, it'd be a big, big tweet <laughs> storm. And 
<laughs> exactly. Well, th thank you so much. Okay. Thanks for having me on. Yes. Always a pleasure. <laughs>